Welcome to WNL Sports Weekly. I'm Jeremy Franklin. This week we'll speak with men's lacrosse coach Dean McCabe, women's lacrosse captain Kara Mulligan, and baseball center fielder Keegan Dolan. But first a quick look back at the weekend in Washington and Lee Athletics. Men's and women's track and field both placed third at the ODAC Outdoor Championship in Salem. Xander Tallman was named Athlete of the Meet for the men, while Dana Lee earned Co-Rookie of the Year honors for the women's team. Both tennis teams opened up ODAC tournament play with quarterfinal wins as the women defeated Guilford 5-0 and the men knocked out Randolph 6-0. Baseball split an ODAC doubleheader at Virginia Wesleyan falling 3-2 in 12 innings in Game 1 before winning the nightcap 9-5. Women's lacrosse finished off a 10-0 regular season run in ODAC play with a 16-9 victory at Bridgewater while the men's team beat Virginia Wesleyan 25-8. With me now is men's lacrosse coach Gene McCabe. Gene, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back here. I mean, it's great to be here. The Marlins came into Lexington 9-3 and on the season, but the Generals seemed to dominate in every aspect of Saturday's game. What enabled Washington and Lee to put together that kind of performance? Well, I think, you know, certainly uh, looking at the score at the end of the first quarter being 5-4, I don't know if anybody would have said the score was going to end up uh, the way it did. But, uh, you know, we got on a roll, and I think the real key for us is um, – and we put a lot of our shots on the cage. So we, we made the goalie make some saves. We moved the ball well. Uh, and we moved without the ball really well to create some really um, fantastic scoring opportunities. On the defensive end, you know, uh, we really challenged our guys against this offense, who is one of the higher powered offenses in the, in the conference, to hold them less than 10 goals. And I think our guys took that challenge personally and, and did a great job on the, on the defensive end. Helped that we won a lot of face-offs with Jared Mitchell there and uh, Jack Clark um, throughout the game doing a great job and uh, the wing guys picking up a lot of ground balls. You had some big holes to fill after graduating the 2013 senior class. How have you replaced some of the key contributors from last year's team? Well, I think the first thing is, you know, we really had a lot of confidence in the younger guys that we had in the program. Uh, we see how hard they work every day. We see the work that they put in. You know, we know how hard they worked in the offseason to get ready for this opportunity. Um, so we just kind of knew young, going in we were going to be younger, but still very talented. And, uh, and it you know, these guys would uh, rise to the challenge. And, and uh, guys like Buck Armstrong, of course, Colin Frazier returning from starting a year ago, uh, Connor O'Toole, Henry Waite, Bobby DiStefano, some of the newer guys on defense um, really have done an outstanding job. You know, and I think our defensive midfield core uh, it's just another level up. We're deep there with uh, Andrew Reel and Will Douthit and, and, uh, and senior uh, Drew Kennevin. And, uh, of course, our long stick meetings with Peter Schubert and Noah Lessing have done an outstanding job. You can't, uh, you can't, you, you got to like what we're getting uh, from our goalie play as well. So I think all of those things combined, we knew we'd be younger going in, but we're really starting to mature and peak at the right time, I think. WNL wraps up the regular season against Hampton Sydney at home on Saturday. You could easily see the Tigers or Roanoke or Lynchburg again in the tournament next week. What are your expectations as the team gets set for the postseason? Well, you know, I think this last week of the regular season, uh, I talked to the guys last night about three things. You know, uh, going out and playing this game and loving the opportunity to get a play in the spring, at spring term, and you're at home to finish out the regular season and, and, and kind of just loving those opportunities. Um, uh, we talked about momentum, how these, these last two games of the regular season, um, we want to have as much momentum going into the postseason as we can. Take it one, one game at a time, play the best we can in each of those opportunities, um, but focus on that idea of having a lot of momentum going into the, in, into the conference play. And then finally, you know, uh, just feeling good about the way we play. You know, I think any time you get an opportunity to play in postseason, that last week can be critical for you you know, in terms of how you feel about what we do and how we do it. And uh, so really, though, that's the focus. And, and wherever the seating falls, wherever it may be, it doesn't really matter to us so much. You know, we're excited to get the opportunity to play in the post-tournament, postseason tournament. We'd like to have that one seed. But, you know, we've gone in as a sixth seed and made it to the championship game before. So um, we'll, take, we'll take advantage of the opportunities that we get. Um, but the key is to have the right mindset and the right momentum going in. For the second straight year, the ODAC semifinals and championship will be played back to back on the first weekend in May. How would you prepare for the specific challenge of having to take on two tough teams on back to back days? Yeah, I think aside from, uh, you know, I think, I think you look at it, I, I suppose you'd like to have some of those opportunities during the season to play back to back like that to sort of help your team get ready. 
um, but we don't have that. So I think for us it's about making sure we're healthy and rested, but also prepared. Um, we have always taken the mindset that what we do is more important than what our opponents do. So that really helps us on a championship weekend because we don't necessarily get all wrapped up in you know, having to over-prepare and develop special game strategies for both teams. And, you know, they each have their strengths and weaknesses, whoever they may be. Um, but uh, focusing on us and getting better every day, that helps us prepare, you know, sort of with that sort of getting your body ready back to back. And we'll certainly be mindful of being fresh and ready to go and having our legs. But, but uh, those are some of the things that we focus on. Gene, thanks for joining us here. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks, Jeremy. It's always great to be here. I'm joined now by Keegan Dolan, senior baseball player from Bethesda, Maryland. Keegan, welcome to the show. Thanks. Good to be here. Washington and Lee was picked seventh in the preseason coaches poll. You lost seven batters from last year's lineup as well as two of your top pitchers, and yet the Generals earned the number four seed for the ODAC tournament. How have things come together for the team this season? We love getting that coaches poll at the beginning of the season. Every year they pick us outside of the, the tournament standings, outside the top six, and we've been in the tournament pretty much every year for the last 10, 15 years. So, um, I mean, we lost a lot of big contributors to the team last year, as, as everybody knows. Um, Hitting-wise, some of the best hitters in the league. I mean, we led the nation in home runs per game last year, and we lost 30 of those 39 home runs. So that was big. Then we lost one of our workhorse pitchers. But what those coaches don't know when they make that poll is how good the kids waiting in the wings are. And, how hungry they are to get into the games and they might have performed just as well last year had they been there. So we had both young guys and old guys that we knew were going to step up once they got in there this year. And then a big surprise was how good our freshman class was. I mean, uh, we've, had, we've had three people contribute significantly offensively and then to the pitching staff, some of those guys have been really awesome for us this year. So we've really gelled as a unit because we're so diverse from freshmen to seniors starting and I think it's a different dynamic and just as good or even better of a team as we had last year, even with all that senior talent. You had a couple of blasts in game two against Virginia Wesley and on Sunday that gave you the single season home run record for Washington in the league with 10. What does that mark mean to you? Well, we really had one major goal going into the season and it's maybe not what you'd expect. It wasn't necessarily to win an ODAC tournament, but it was to keep playing together as a unit as long as we could. And I stole that from our seniors last year, but there's going to come a time this season when if we lose this game, then I'm never going to play baseball again for the rest of my life, but that's not today. And I think um, that's, that's our main goal, but on a, on a more personal level, I definitely had some goals for the season. I accomplished some of them, and one of them was to get that home run record I had in my sights after last year. I mean, we hit so many, so I figured I'd try to go for that this year, and it's good to see all the hard work that I put in the off season during the season this year pay off. Because of the crazy weather this spring, there have been many occasions when you've played a lot of games in a short amount of time. Most recently, you had the back-to-back -back ODAC doubleheaders uh, on Wednesday and Thursday of last week. How will that schedule prepare you as you get set for the ODAC tournament? The ODAC tournament is just such a grind. I mean, in order to win it, you have to play five or six games in four days. And in the two experiences I've had in the tournament so far, we've only played two or three games. But um, in order to do well in the tournament, you have to have that deep pitching staff and you have to know how to use them effectively. Our coaching staff has to know when to pull which strings and put what guys where. And I think playing those six games in five days that we did last week really allowed our coaches to, to figure out who to put in where and allow our pitchers to know when to push themselves and how far they can push themselves in order to not only consider, hey, I got to start today and be good today, but I might have to go again tomorrow or the next day in order to give our team a chance to win the tournament. In addition to the pitching, uh, what are the other keys for the generals to have success down in Lynchburg? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing in the tournament is definitely pitching, but from an offense perspective, we're not necessarily an offensive juggernaut like Shando or the team we were even last year that's going to go out and win games by scoring 10, 15 runs, but what we can do is, is have timely hitting. And we struggled with that at the beginning of the season a little bit, and is why we kind of fell back in the ODAC in the, the first quarter of the season. But what we've been doing lately really well is both two out hitting and taking advantage of opportunities with runners in scoring position, and then continue to have the great defense, barring that one Shando game, which we'll forget about, but the, the best defense in the ODAC. Keegan, thanks for joining us here. Best of luck at the ODAC tournament. Thank you, I'm looking forward to it. With me now is Kara Mulligan, junior lacrosse captain from Glen Ridge, New Jersey. Kara, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. At this time last year, Washington and Lee was 7-9. and nine. You were getting set to enter the ODAC tournament as the number four seed. You ended up winning the championship, but this season, 10-0 in the ODAC, 14-2 overall. How have the Generals been able to bounce back in 2014? Yeah, um, I would say that this season, our senior class is so strong. Um, they came into the season knowing what they wanted. We had our goals set. 
And I think especially when they were freshmen, they had a senior class that was really strong and helped lead them. And they really wanted to emulate that for the freshmen who are half of our team practically. So it was really important for them to pull the freshmen up and especially because they're so talented. And just the team culture this year is really great. And um, just overall, all bonded really quickly. And uh, we want to work hard in the lacrosse field. So we've been pretty successful so far. As a goalie, how much confidence do you have in your defense, especially with all ODAC and all American players like Leanne Stone and Olive Waxter in front of you? Yeah, um, it's really fun to play with players like Olive and Leanne. Um, I mean, it's one thing because, you know, Leanne will strip the ball from your stick and Olive will get that ground ball or that draw control. But it's another thing because they're kind of the rock for me and I know the other defenders. So if anything's going wrong, you know, you can turn to them and they're going to help you out. Um, so it's really their level of play and just their overall uh, leadership on the field on defense so it's it's fun to play with them for sure you've saved around half of the free position shots that you've faced so far this season as a goalie how do you prepare for an eight meter chance when it's often an attacking player one-on-one -on -one against you yeah um, uh, people have or goalies have different ways to approach eight meters but I know for me watching film really helps um, Brooke our, our coach is really great um, about giving us uh, scouting reports and kind of showing me where attackers are likely to shoot, but um, you can't always rely on that. So most of it is in the moment and just getting ready to attack the ball and on your toes and you don't know where it's going to go, so you kind of just have to react. But um, part of it is scouting and just preparing for what kind of a attack team they'll be. The Generals entered the ODAC tournament on a 10-game winning streak. What do you need to do to maintain that momentum and your high level of play going into the postseason? So we play on Saturday against Randolph-Macon, and it's been tough because um, we've had some easier games the past um, two weeks um, over spring break and such. But for us, what we really try to what we really try to do is um, have really competitive practices, so that when we play in the games, it, it'll be easier, hopefully, than what um, has been what it has been like at practice. Um, and then also just, you know, when we get into these games, they might be one or two goal games back and forth the whole game. And we just need to maintain our composure. And um, also we're, we have a lot of depth on the, on the, uh, our team this year. So really utilizing everyone on the team and getting all over people all over the field because we have that strength to really use everyone. So um, it's kind of just the culmination of all our hard work, but we're excited and uh, we're, we're getting pumped for Saturday. Kara, thanks for joining us here. Good luck against the Yellow Jackets in the ODEX semifinals. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It's time now for a look at the upcoming weekend. Baseball travels to Lynchburg for the ODAC tournament, with the Generals opening up against Bridgewater on Thursday evening. Action continues throughout the weekend down at City Stadium. Both tennis teams will take on Bridgewater in the ODAC semifinals at Sweetbriar. The women's match begins at 8.30 a.m., while the men meet the Eagles at 2. The championship matches are slated for Sunday. Back in Lexington on Saturday, men's lacrosse wraps up the regular season against Hampton Sydney, and the top-seeded women's team will play host to Randolph-Macon in an ODAC semifinal matchup. And the men's and women's golf teams travel to Conover, North Carolina for the ODAC championship, which starts on Sunday. For WNL Sports Weekly, I'm Jeremy Franklin. Thanks for watching.